installed, if you go ahead and launch it, you just get a little warning here about the Windows firewall. Now the features of Kane that the firewall interferes with, we don't actually need for this attack, so you can leave the firewall enabled and just go ahead and launch Kane anyway. Now one of the first things we need to do when we've launched Kane is to identify clients on the network that we can attack. So go to the sniffer tab and hit the start sniffer button in the top left. Now what Kane's doing at this point is it's listening for broadcast packets from other clients on the network to try and identify them. But because that could take a while to speed things along, you can hit the blue plus icon at the top to open the MAC address scanner. Now what this MAC address scanner is configured to do is to communicate with all the available IP addresses on your subnet in the hope of determining if there's a client at the other end of them. So you can just leave it on the default settings and hit OK. And you can see there that it's trying to communicate with all of the available IP addresses. And these are the hosts that it's found on the first pass. Now the device that I want to target is actually not showing up yet. And that's okay because these scans aren't always 100% effective. And what you can do is just hit the plus icon again, hit OK, and let it scan everything again. Now the device isn't there yet, so we'll give it one more try. And it's not showing up. Now what an attacker could do at this point is just initiate any form of communication with the target device. Now an attacker would have to sit and guess the IP addresses, but I actually know the IP address of the target device. There's not many, it wouldn't take long to go through and manually ping them all to see if there's anything there. So I'm just going to go ahead and ping it, and as you can see straight away, Kane has detected that traffic and identified the client on the network. Now. Now that you've identified the client, what we can actually do at this point is start the IP poisoning attack. So you need to go to the APR tab at the bottom, and APR is just Kane's acronym for ARP Poison Routing. It's just a slightly different acronym for the same thing. And you need to click in this empty section here, and that will enable the blue plus icon at the top. So select the empty routes, click plus, and this is where you add a new route that you want to poison. So I know that the dot one hundred address is the device that I want to target, which is my phone, and I also know that the dot one address is the default gateway. So I'm basically saying that I want to intercept any traffic between the phone and the gateway, which is where any traffic bound to the internet will go, or coming back from the internet will originate. Now, if you don't know the default gateway, in your command prompt window, if you just type in ipconfig forward slash all and scroll down just a little bit you'll be able to see the default gateway value and that's where you can get it from if you don't know what it is. So any traffic between the phone and the default gateway hit OK and you can now see that Kane is sat idle ready to intercept traffic on that route. So if you go ahead and press the start APR button in the top left you can now see that Kane is ready to start poisoning that traffic and that's going to force the traffic between the phone and the gateway and vice versa through our network adapter and you can see this little half routing icon here. That means that Kane has detected some traffic and is currently working on routing it through our adapter. And once that happens, that will change to a green icon and it will say routing. Now, just while we're waiting for Kane to get going, what we can do is open up Wireshark and get Wireshark ready. Because once Kane has poisoned that traffic and it's coming through our adapter, Wireshark will be able to view it. So you need to select your interface from the interface list. If you don't know which one it is, it will generally be the one with the most traffic on, so just look for the one with the most packets. Select that, and then hit start. And again, just like we did last time, I'm going to set up a filter just to remove any traffic that we don't want from the results. And as well, because I know what the target device is this time, I'm actually just going to set up an IP filter as well. So this filter here basically says we only want to see cookies and we only want to see cookies for this IP address which is the IP address of the target. So as you can see Kane has now successfully started routing some of the traffic from the phone through our adapter and basically any time a cookie pops through you will now see it pop up in Wireshark. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and open the browser on my phone now and I'm going to navigate to a website and I'm going to navigate to Kickstarter now because I'm logged into Kickstarter and it's set to remember me and I'm requesting the index page which is loaded over HTTP it means that the cookie will be sent over HTTP which means that I can intercept it. So now that I've requested that page I'm just going to start Wireshark there now because we should already have what we want and in fact the very first request that we came through here after I opened the browser was a GET request for the root page 
And if you want to see what website that request was for, if you come down here to the HTTP section of the packet and just expand that out, you can actually see what the host site was. So you can see there the request was sent to kickstart.com and we were requesting the root page, which is the index page for the site. Now again, as the Kickstart site uses HTTP on some of its pages, it means here that the cookie value is actually visible to me. And like we did before, I can copy the value of the cookie. So what I'm going to do is just fire up a notepad and I can paste in the value of the cookie there. Now, there's a little bit of kind of research that needs to be done here in determining which value is actually the session ID. A lot of sites will just call it session or session ID or PHP session. And if we actually just have a look for the word session, we can see here that Kickstarter has called theirs underscore KSR underscore session. So we know that there's a good chance that that is probably the session ID. So what I'm going to do is copy the entire session ID here and take a copy of that. I can now close this because we don't need that anymore. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fire up my browser. And in the browser, I'm going to navigate to the Kickstarter website. And as you can see on the browser here, I'm currently I'm not signed in at all. I've got the login or sign up links in the top right, but I've also got my cookie manager installed in the browser. So I'm just going to get rid of Kane and Wireshark because they can sometimes interfere with the browser. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and open up the cookie manager. So here you can see all of the Kickstarter cookies. And the one that we were looking for in particular was this one just here, the underscore KSR underscore session value. Now again, just to close that and show you, I'm not signed in here, it's prompted me to log in or sign up, so I'm definitely not signed into the website. So I'm just going to open that cookie browser again. Come down to this KSR session, and I'm just going to select all of that cookie, delete it. And I'm going to paste in the value that we copied from the session ID that we've just copied out of the traffic from Wireshark. And I'm actually going to submit those changes to my cookie. And then if I come back to the page and refresh here, now that we're using the session ID that we stole from the phone, the website now actually believes that we're the user that's logged in on the phone. And as you can see, we're now signed into the account just as we would be if we'd use the user credentials, except we didn't need access to them. It was just the session ID.